though it can prove to be difficult in that particular moment when something is happening, try your best to stay calm and composed when you are dealing with uh, narcissists to avoid giving them control over, over you. Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is part two of the Narcissist series. So having looked at all the having looked at the four types of uh, narcissists, um, I thought it was important for us to also look at how we can deal with uh, narcissists. Like uh, the best ways to disarm them and uh, help yourself in situations where you feel like you're drained and all that by their actions. So this video will focus on ways to disarm um, a narcissist and uh, <coughs> I'm sure all of us have uh, had interactions with people we've labeled narcissists before but then for uh, maybe clarification purposes you see, statistics show that uh, 10 to 15, only 10 to 15 percent of the world population turn out to be real narcissists. And um, if you look at the current world population, just do the maths. I don't know how many uh, you will come up with. Now, I think maybe it's also time you changed how you look at um, the people you refer to as narcissists because somehow it might uh, prevent you from dealing with the real problem, having formed an opinion about someone. Therefore, you should also get to actually know exactly what you're dealing with if you've all been assuming that you're dealing with a what? With a narcissist. And for those who, are, who have had their fair share uh, of run-ins with narcissists, you know the people who are always trying to one-up you always talking about themselves and never seem to be happy unless they are making other people feel small. Yeah, those people. Interacting with narcissists can leave you feeling confused, uh, frustrated, angry, upset and unused. Whether it's a friend, family member, colleague or neighbor, dealing with them can be difficult and leave you drained. You could say that uh, they are master puppeteers and often use coercion, guilt and gaslighting to get what they want. It is best to avoid engaging with uh, narcissists whenever possible. <laughs> However, there are times when you cannot walk away and this video is those ones of is for those ones of you who might find themselves in this kind of situation. So there are different uh, kind of things that narcissists really don't like or don't always expect to hear from people, especially when, to ha when they want to have their way. And um, one of those things that could help you disarm a narcissist is how you rest on to, to their, uh, maybe their agitation, uh, their prompt for you to maybe say what you always say and then they get to use that to uh, puppeteer you or manipulate you. Like we said before, narcissists always use your weaknesses. They will always look at the things that you are inefficient in and then use them to uh, puppeteer you. Uh, I know I'm using the word puppeteer but uh, you could use manipulate you. So. One of the ways to disarm a narcissist is to stay calm and composed. Narcissists often try to provoke emotional reactions uh, to gain a sense of control over others. They may resort to manipulation, lies or personal attacks to get a rise out of you. And once you get uh, a rise, or let's say in other words, uh, you boil, 
and then they will take advantage of that situation. Now, um, though it can prove to be difficult in that particular moment when something is happening, try your best to stay calm and composed when you are dealing with uh, narcissists to avoid giving them control over, over you. Um, the second way of dealing with a narcissist is to keep yourself, uh, sorry, to keep your responses brief. When you interact with a narcissist, um, keep your explanations as short and to the point as possible. When it comes to dealing with a narcissist, we always say that less is more. The less you talk, and the more you communicate, uh, something like that. So the less you give, the less they will have to use to puppeteer you or manipulate you. The more information you provide, the more likely you are to get into a back and forth with them because you're giving them more fodder for their action or for their, uh, for their purpose, which is always get into your nerves and get their way out of every situation. So narcissists also tend to use whatever information you provide to gaslight you by confusing you and making you feel crazy. That is mostly what happens. So responding briefly is the best way to counter all that. The third um, way to disarm a narcissist is to set boundaries and stick to them. Narcissists tend to have excessive expectations from uh, people, whether it is regarding work, uh, appearance, or something else. You may find yourself struggling to meet the expectations and needing to set boundaries in order to protect yourself. When it comes to setting boundaries, it's not a very easy thing to do with the narcissist. So that means that um, while doing that, you have to really think through the boundaries you want to set with them based on what is realistic for, for you and writing them down so you can refer to writing them down so, so you can refer to your notes and and stand your ground and writing them down so you can stand uh, refer to your notes and uh, stand your ground when the narcissist is trying to bully or manipulate you because um, just a word of mouth like um, cannot really permeate uh, their senses sometimes so you have to really have something that is written that uh, you can refer to every time that you have an altercation or let's say um, a discussion with a narcissist regarding things that you've always talked about before so that you can have something to at least um, prove that this was this kind and of agreement was made and this and that so setting boundaries is setting boundaries and sticking to them is uh, uh, it's a major way of disarming a narcissist now the fourth way to um, disarm a narcissist is to get them to commit to things in writing. Like I was saying with the boundaries, narcissists may try to gaslight you by twisting your words, denying something they said or flat out lying to you. They can change your sense of what's real. So slowly over time that you don't even realize it's happening to you. It can be helpful to get things in writing so you have proof of the truth. Try to get them to text or email you the expectations and ideas so that if they try to claim they said something different later on you have it in their own words uh, that they actually crafted so for instance you could use things like text me the time and place so we don't have any mix-ups uh, second example will be since there's been some miscommunications about my uh, my deliverables, let's say so. Please email your requirements for the for the deliverables. Um, the third example could be since I'm helping cover for people on vacation or people 
who are absent i want to be able to do everything please email me your priorities see things like this will help with reference point and um, they go a long way in helping you keep your sanity the fifth way to be some a narcissist remember that their behavior is is not your fault narcissists can be vicious and their anger or rejection is going to be out of proportion to anything you've done remember that none of their behavior is your fault even if you've made some kind of mistake before you blame yourself put things in perspective by thinking about what a reasonable person will do in the same situation and comparing it to the narcissist's uh, reaction. This exercise can help you see how unreasonable and difficult they are being. This is because um, the narcissists always um, run away from the fact that they're the ones who have done something. So they always want you to feel guilty even if the fault wasn't yours. So always remind yourself, do not forget that their behavior is not is not your fault now there are phrases that could be used in helping you deal with um, people who have these tendencies of uh, narcissism and uh, <coughs> uh, like i was saying that <coughs> sorry <coughs> there are um, different phrases that you could use to help uh, you deal with <coughs> narcissists and uh, one of them is that doesn't work for me narcissists may try to make decisions for you without consulting you it's therefore important to speak up for yourself and let them know if you're not okay with what they have decided so if you are point blank and you say this doesn't work for me it will help him you remember when we're talking about setting boundaries it will help with that uh, the second phrase that could also work is i can understand how you feel but i feel differently you don't need to try to prove who is right or wrong. You can feel and see a situation differently and that's fine. Trying to prove your point will give the narcissist more ammunition to use against you. So always appreciate, like I mean validate uh, what they feel, but also let them also know that you don't have to feel the same way that they feel. Uh, the third way is to, the third phrase is, um, I don't see myself that way. Often, narcissists try to, uh, to make themselves feel better by making you feel negatively about yourself. It is important that you stay strong in what you believe is true so that you don't feel less whenever they use um, those demeaning statements or statements that are meant to make you feel less of yourself. Um, the fourth uh, maybe phrase that could work on narcissist is I remember it differently this is especially important when you are being told by a narcissist that you might be imagining something or that it might uh, that it never happened let them know that you remember let them know that you remember what you really ha uh, what really happened so they can't manipulate events don't let them make you doubt yourself the sixth um, uh, phrase is I will only have a conversation with you about this if you are willing to listen and try to understand my perspective setting boundaries for the conversation up front can help ensure that the conversation is more respectful otherwise you don't have to discuss that particular subject with them the seventh phrase i'm not going to explain why this is important to me but it is sometimes we need to put a boundary in place with a narcissist, but we have to be mindful that when we explain why, it gives them an opportunity to manipulate or gaslight us. In such situations, you can uphold uh, what's important to you without giving big explanations. And the eighth phrase will be, I'm not willing to talk about that. And it's, yeah, I'm not willing to talk about that. It's always okay to excuse yourself from speaking about certain things especially if you don't feel comfortable doing that if a narcissist brings up a subject that they know you don't want to talk about it's important to assert that you are not willing to engage with them you don't have to justify your reasons for not wanting to discuss it because remember this is someone who has mastered the art of puppeteering people so 
just be on the lookout for uh, situations like that. The next phrase that could also help with uh, dealing with a narcissist or disarming a narcissist uh, is if you continue to speak to me like that, I will walk away. If the conversation is becoming toxic, you need to make it clear that you will not tolerate their disrespect. State your boundaries clearly, but firmly. Uh, it's always good to assert yourself with the narcissist because uh, remember that we said that they know no boundaries on what they can use or what they can't use to um, steer a conversation or a situation to towards their benefit. Um, to the next phrase, I'm going to step away from this conversation. It is important to stick to your boundaries. Realize when you need to disengage and step away to get clarity. Because sometimes you could be fogged or uh, bogged by all this information that might be inaccurate in the way that they remember them. Remember in quote, uh, so that you uh, get agitated and say things or do stuff that will eventually work against you in the end. So it's important to stick to your boundaries and realize when to disengage and step away to get that clarity that you need to deal with the situation. Um, the last phrase that maybe the last phrase among the many that you could come up with that you could use to be some a narcissist is something of this sort. Thank you for inviting me, but I'm not available. So if you want to serve a contact with a narcissist, politely but firmly let them know that you are not available or interested in whatever that they're inviting you to attend. Because sometimes, like we said before, when we're looking at the types of narcissists in the previous video, um, they always want to put themselves in the spotlight. Like uh, they want to be the ones to uh, be known or be felt or be seen. So sometimes they might invite you to particular events or places or uh, things so that they can prove to others that they are important or to feel important. So uh, when you can be able to tell them that you're not available for the invitation that they have sent you, uh, it could be a, a good way to help yourself because they won't have that platform to disrespect you and to put you in a toxic place where you feel like uh, you need to, let's say, prove yourself as well. So seek help if you need it. Sometimes dealing with these people can be very difficult. And if you're, struggling, if you're struggling to deal with a narcissist, it can be helpful to reach out to friends, uh, other family members, if these people, if they are family members, you can also reach out to other family members or a mental health professional for support because um, these people could also help you, uh, help offer emotional validation, help you maintain your sense of reality and support you while you set boundaries to protect yourself. A narcissistic behavior can often cross the line and turn into abuse. So if you live with a narcissist, narcissistic abuser, you can always uh, look for help in areas where you are. I know there are always two support groups where you can go and share or they can be there for you when you need someone to uh, maybe lean on when you are exhausted by this kind of behaviors that the narcissists uh, portray. So to this point, I hope that uh, you've grasped something that could be of help to you while dealing with a narcissist. And uh, I hope uh, this message was uh, helpful to you. Please uh, share if there is someone in your cycles who needs this kind of information. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for always keeping it here. And uh, if you are new here, please consider subscribing so that we can, uh, you can help support the channel so that we can be able to produce more and more of these kind of videos to help you live a better life because our intention is to help you be empowered with information that can help you live your life in a better way or change the way uh, you look at life 
and be aware of uh, who you are. So thank you for listening up to this point. Bye and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.